In the practice of mindfulness, we're training ourselves to see and feel as clearly as possible so that we can respond as skillfully as possible. And if this was easy, we'd be living in a very different world. Seeing is a prerequisite for change. We are hostage to our habits until we can see them. Seeing is a skill and an art. It grows more refined and nuanced with practice. Birders know this. How many of you are birders? I know you can't like say yes, but you can nod. <laughs> right? <clears throat> For those of you who don't partake, <clears throat> it is a slow sport, a slow leisure pastime. When I was younger, I could not understand the fascination with birds. I thought it was boring <clears throat> and I thought it was an old person's pastime. Well, I was half right. <clears throat> it does seem to attract the older crowd, but I think that is because when we get older, we live in a slower time and we develop an appreciation for the smaller beauties life offers like the markings of a bird and the sound of its calls. Bill spoke of the cats yesterday. Okay, and this morning, I and the cats were standing at a window. I was standing, they were sitting at a window, rapt attention at a porcupine and a little cub making their way slowly through the field. <laughs> Seeing. We learn, we learn to see what was previously hidden and unseen. That's how we discover newness. And we learn to see what is here right now in the present moment. We learn to commune with the object and appreciate. We see a lot already. Our habit is to notice, to zero in on certain aspects of experience and gloss over others. Right now, if your eyes are open, if our eyes are open, we are seeing many things. We're seeing the computer screen, this, the room we're, we're sitting in. We might be able to look out a window and see the outdoors. Much is taken in with our eyes. But that does not mean we are aware of where exactly our attention is being pulled. It does not mean that we have landed on any particular object long enough for it to register. For us to be able to notice and name it. And without this clarity, we default to our autopilot setting of seeing, which is mostly superficial, enough to stay out of harm's way or to get where we want to go. We need to see with enough clarity that a stove burner is still on so we don't burn ourselves. See that we're taking the last piece of pie in order to be able to ask our beloved if they'd like to split it. See the microaggressions, the small imperfections of our speech that offend, lest we continue to do it to see the ways we unconsciously or semi-consciously harm ourselves by how we speak to ourselves in the privacy of our mind in order to begin to interrupt that bad habit. From a mindfulness perspective, seeing means that we have noticed where attention has landed. We have stilled the movement of attention interrupted the flow of visual scanning and surface monitoring to see with clarity and precision where attention has been drawn or landed. This may seem obvious, but it is not. It is very hard, for example, to see our blind spots. Their nature is to hide in plain sight. We sort of know but not really, not deeply, not clearly enough to do anything meaningful with the information. They may make an appearance, but not be fully recognized. 
as Wu Tanjaniya says, awareness is not enough. To remedy this, I find the practice of labeling to be extremely helpful in developing the skill of seeing. Because in order to name something, we have to steady our looking long enough to be able to do so. Naming clarifies what is being seen and naming introduces a deliberate break in the stream of thinking. This is quite a useful, quite a useful tool. Though the practice has fallen out of, fact, out of fashion in Western Vipassana world, I do encourage you to explore it. Naming puts a mindfulness stake in the ground. And in the moment of naming, we are not lost in the thinking. We've woken up out of the stream of thought long enough to see it and to have that register. This interruption, repeated many times, weakens that kind of thinking, the reactive habit. And with time, can grow a patch of mental real estate from which we can begin to consider how best to respond. We are not lost in the daydream, but rather we are standing still, steadying attention and seeing the mind, quote, daydreaming, clearly enough that we can name it. Now we know what we're working with. It is as if we were bird watching standing very still in a wooded area or clearing and watching intensely for a sighting. Then suddenly we see something out of the corner of our eye and we grow stiller. Attention narrows just a bit more. And now we begin to name in our minds what's being seen. The blaze of red on the crown of the head the white head, the flash of black over the eyes and around the mouth. And the mind gets busy and again, sort of rattles and pulls forward, pileated woodpecker, named it, named it. This is what we wanna do in practice, to see ourselves as if we are birds being observed by a passionate birder. So let's venture into the wilderness and see what's there. Let's discover, uncover, rediscover. But remember, explorers in uncharted territory do not know what they will see. And what is hardest to see is often right in front of us. Be curious about these two ideas. That what is hardest to see is often right in front of us. And that in uncharted territory, we don't know yet what we'll encounter, what we'll see. The safest thing to do then is to train ourselves to see what is and to see potentially harmful and dangerous things. And to see what is here that is potentially life affirming and safe to make those distinctions what is harmful and what is helpful for my well-being <clears throat> lastly i'd ask that we give ourselves permission to do this because uh, most of the time we don't we don't give ourselves the space the time to really investigate or look more closely so give yourselves that. Remember that mindfulness doesn't care what we see, but that we see, and that we learn how to see reality with greater clarity. Thank you for your kind attention. <laughs> <laughs>